If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistenrelf. Of all of the spoilers that came out in Modern Masters 3, Modern Masters 2017, the one that actually got me the most excited was Mystical Teachings. Now, part of that's because I didn't see any Infect cards, there aren't any, so that's out of the way. But mostly it's because I saw Mystical Teachings back in Time Spiral as a block deck and thought that that was just the coolest thing that I had ever seen. Unfortunately, I never got to play during Time Spiral. I wasn't actually playing Magic at all during that time. And so, yeah, this, this is an experience that I did not get to have, but playing it afterwards, just playtesting the deck on my own, I thought this is the coolest thing. Winning with something like Sprout Swarm. Have you seen that? That was one of the win conditions that you could use at the time. But Mystical Teachings is also a thing in Popper. And while I've never had the exact cards to make the deck work as I would like, it is still a thing. It is a powerful, mostly versatile deck, playing on a different axis than almost anything else in the format. For those that don't know, Mystical Teachings is an instant. Four mana, but it has a flashback cost. You can go and get an instant or a creature with flash and add it to your hand. Of course, you have to reveal it, shuffle after, yada yada. You get the idea. And because it has flashback, this lets you do it again later on. So you run it as a three or a four in a popper deck, and you win usually with Evencar's Evencar's Justice. Justice! You win with a Wrath that also hits both players. Now it hits both players, but this will win you the game if your life total is higher. So you use cards like Pristine Talisman to make your life total higher. And there are others that I'm just not remembering off the top of my head. So that's one way that you can go about winning. Also, you'll see sometimes one, there aren't any land, there's no creeping tar pit, there's no stalking stones in Popper. I think the only land creature we have is Colony Garden. <laughs> And that doesn't exactly get the job done. Usually, though, the deck ends up running zero creatures. You could run something like Curse of the Bloody Tome. I mentioned Sprout Swarm if you want to splash green. Um, I'm sure that there are others, but you don't usually see creatures. If you do, it's something like a Seagate Oracle. Enters the battlefield, look at the top two cards, one to your hand, one to, I think, the bottom of the library. Right now, though, we're getting another, we're getting a rarity shift from uncommon to common, and that is Augur of Bolas, another powerful blue card. Now, this does a number of things for us. It is a 2 mana 1 3. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library, so a little bit of an upgrade over Seagate. You may reveal an instant or sorcery from among them and put it into your hand, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Even if you're running this as a 4 of, that's still probably more than half your deck is going to be a hit. So Augur Bolas should not miss all that often. Importantly, it's a 3 toughness creature, which means that it survives Evancard's justice. Now, there aren't too many creatures in a list like this, I just said, but once you've established a strong enough lock, once you're controlling the opponent well enough, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but not much to say that any win condition will do. Once you're to the point where you have as many counter spells as they could possibly play threats, you have as many kill spells, etc., you can beat them down for one turn after turn after turn, along with other, you know, Evan Carr's justice with buyback uh, to make that a little bit happen a little bit more quickly. This also gives you the ability to play Grim Harvest and get some value out of it. Grim Harvest, you remember, is an instant for 2 mana, and it has Recover for 3 mana. So, you play Augur of Bolas, it dies at some point, you get it back with Grim Harvest, it dies, you recover, and then play Grim Harvest. This gives you a lot of value off of Augur. However, this isn't necessarily the right thing to do. There is an opportunity cost to this. For one thing, part of the reason that so many of these lists, these mystical teachings lists, are running zero creatures is because they can have some of their sideboard dedicated to transforming a little bit. I'm the opponent of the teachings deck and I see they have no creatures. And so I take out my 
um, my disfigures, my lightning bolts. I take out anything that would deal with creatures. And then suddenly they bring in Gurmog Angler and Delver of Secrets or Mole Drifter or something like that. And then you realize you have made a horrible mistake. Even if you go to game three after seeing that, now it's a guessing game. Do I bring in uh, creature hate, anticipating that they'll have creatures? Do I leave it out, anticipating they'll take the creatures out? Or do I make a split and just hope that I get there? I in any case, unless they make the hard read, you end up getting some value out of that. Well, value may not be quite the right word. So, Augurobolus, I think, could go into these lists, but then it takes away the ability for you to make your opponent take their removal out as you bring more creatures in. Maybe it's still worth it, though. For me, personally, if I were running a teachings list, I would try, at least, to run four Augurobolus and a Sprout Swarm, in addition to a couple of Evancar's Justice as win conditions. Now, Justice is a sorcery, which means you can't just go and tutor it up with Mystical Teachings. But Sprout Swarm <laughs> is an instant. Now it is green, meaning you have to splash another color. But I'm the kind of player that literally cannot resist the urge to play Brainstorm and Fetch Lands in the same deck if they can be. So you get your Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, however many of each, and one Forest, and now you can Fetch for it, and you have Brainstorm and play Fetch Lands. I know Popper doesn't see uh, Brainstorm see as much play as, say, in Legacy, in, a, in large part due to the fetches not being as good, but I cannot help my, excuse me, cannot help myself. I love the card and I love being able to do that. So, sorry, it has to be done. And Sprout Swarm is itself a pretty reliable win condition because it gets around opponent's removal in a way that something like Augurobolas can't. And you do that by just repeatedly casting it over and over. It has Convoke and Buyback, so the tokens that it makes can be used to help pay for it. And eventually you just reach this point where the number that you can put out turn after turn goes up exponentially in such a way that you just, they can't, they can't do it, they can't deal, they can't even. All right, so I'm excited for that uh, rarity shift, that reprint. And I wonder what you think. Are you considering trying Augur Bolas? There are other lists it could play in. Say, for example, a Delver list, or... 20 minutes later. Oh, I know! The Mole Drifter, Mnemonic Wall, or Archaeomancer, Ghostly Flicker combo. That's another one that Augur Bolas could go and get. Because, so Mole Drifter is a creature, enters the battlefield, draw two cards. Easy enough. Mnemonic Wall and Archaeomancer say that when they enter the battlefield, you get an instant or sorcery back from your yard, and you prefer Wall because it survives Bolt and Disfigure at all. Ghostly Flicker is an instant that lets you blink the two of them. It lets you blink two creatures, artifacts, or lands, I believe. And that's pretty cool, right? This, of course, was a piece in familiar combos decks, but you don't need to go infinite in this case. The trick here is that you're just, you know, getting it for value. So Agrobolus can go and get the Ghostly Flicker, which can then blink Moldrifter to draw you two cards, and Mnemonic Wall to get the Ghostly Flicker back. And you can keep doing this as many times as you want, so long as you have the mana. And you can keep, it's an instant, so you can do it at end of turn as well. And you can hold up Counter Magic at all. So that's something else that you could use, I guess. So, Teachings, Delver, Ghostly Flicker combo. Those are just some ideas. In any case, thank you very much for watching. I will see you later. Bye-bye.